Hey guys, Ivan here, and in this video, first we're gonna talk about Chris Bumstead and what he looks like in his off-season. That's right, he's deep into his off-season. Olympia happened a while ago, and as you can see, he retained a lot of muscle this time around and a very low body fat percent for somebody who, as we heard already many times, doesn't blast in the off-season or doesn't do any juice. Like, we used to listen to him talk about this, and he says that in the off-season, he just does some TRT, or, like, maybe a little bit over that, and sometimes he's completely off. I don't know what is the situation right now, he didn't say, but I'm assuming he's not blasting, because, uh, look, I mean, usually, even classic VZ guys who are trying to reach the weight cap, who are trying to grow, they look a little bit bloated in the off-season, like, their, their guts are... A little bit swollen and like they are overall holding a little bit of a, a film of water but Chris no like he looks dry he looks maybe he has a tiny bit a tiny layer of fat like a very tiny like he's very lean also and like he he looks healthy like he looks athletic I mean his stomach is just sucked in and he's dry he's not holding any water so yeah I'm assuming he's not on anything or on some testosterone maybe that's it and i'm also assuming he's not really eating too much food because once again he doesn't need to grow and that all goes together like food training and and gear and i'm guessing he he's training hard why wouldn't he but i'm sure he's not really force feeding himself because if he was he would be at least a little bit bloated and he isn't i'm gonna show you another photo in a moment also he has that autoimmune system disease so he doesn't really he he shouldn't force feed he shouldn't really force a lot of protein and also he shouldn't be doing any crazy things uh, year round i mean he he reached the weight cap basically like he has maybe a couple of pounds left and those pounds he can gain during the prep when gear is higher when he's training super hard when his diet is on point he can gain some more of that maturity, uh, some separation that he didn't have before, you know, that kind of stuff, like minor details. But to just grow overall in the off-season, unless he plans on doing open, he doesn't need to do that. So yeah, here is another photo. This one is really showing what is happening in his physique. You can see it clearly here. Uh, as you can see, he's just softer, basically. So I don't think he gained a lot of fat, like a tiny little bit. He's not holding any water because I believe he's not on anything and he's just a little bit softer and a little bit smoother because he's not taking any androgens that are gonna make him look harder. But I'm sure he's training hard that he's eating enough food to just retain all the muscle to look very good during the year, which he does. He does look great here. I mean, he doesn't look like he looks on Mr. Olympia stage, but he can't walk around looking like that, of course. So, like, for, I mean, he has great genetics, as we all know, uh, and um, even if he's not at, a, at his 100%, he still looks better than 99% of us, so it's good enough for him. Like, once again, he's not as hard as he is when he's show ready, and why would he be? Like, there is no point for that. And also, he's not, like, bigger, much bigger than he is when he's show ready, so he basically stayed the same as far as size, he just got a little softer, which is, I'm sure, ideal for his goals, for his situation, considering the fact that he has that autoimmune system disease and the fact that he reached the weight cap, that all he needs to do right now is to just stay healthy, maintain his physique, and just get super hard, super detailed, super shredded for the, st for the stage when he's prepping, and that's it. He's gonna win as many Mr. Olympias as he likes. Anyways, he looks great right now. Tell me, guys, your thoughts on Chris's physique right now down below in the comment section. All right, this was interesting. This is Rafael Brandau posting a goodbye letter <laughs> to Chris Asito, his coach of five years. Now, in this caption here, he never really said, Chris and I stopped working. But he's just referring to him and Chris working in a past tense. And you can get the idea that they stopped working. Now, the big question here in the comments and everywhere else is why? Why did he stop working with Chris Asito? Now, in this caption here, which is very lengthy caption, 
you can see that he adores the man, that he that he loves Christian Sitter, that they worked very successfully, and you guys know, he got up to top 10 at the Olympia this year, and he won multiple pro shows, like, he made solid progress, but there is one thing that really didn't happen uh, in those five years, he never really became a mass monster, he never really grew a ton of muscle. So once again, the question is why he stopped working with Chris, and my answer, my assumption at least, would be the fact that Chris Aceto is not really an off-season coach. He is more of a prep coach, right? He's going to get you dry, he's going to get you peaked for a show, he's going to get you dehydrated, he's going to get you peeled as well. If you prep with him, he's going to get you body fat free. But when it comes to growing his guys... He doesn't really do that. And I listen to some guys that he works with. For example, back in the day with Luke Sando, he was speaking, you know, in details about this on the podcast. And he was saying that, like, they're working together a whole year. But in the off season, you know, Luke just tells him what he does, like how much he's eating, what he's taking, what he, what his training is looking like. And Chris would be like, good, just keep doing that. You know, that would be it. Like, that's his part in the off season. He does not really know how to help these guys grow. And I think that's why they stopped working. What else would it be? Now, I don't know which is going to be who is going to be Rafael's next coach, but somebody like Matt Jensen would definitely be a proper choice. Because Matt, you can see his body of work and you can see that all of his guys are pretty much mass monsters. Like starting with uh, Dallas McCarver back in the day, like he was one of the biggest bodybuilders like of all time. Then now you have Nick Walker probably the biggest guy today, uh, you can see what he did with like Brett Wilkin, how fast he progressed, how fast he grew in the past couple of years, you can see it now with uh, Justin Shire, who also made a big leap in size, and like all of his guys really, and uh, you can watch, for example, Fuad Abiyad's podcast with him, with Matt Jansen, he talks about what he does in the offseason, and why his, why his guys are progressing so fast, why they're all getting so big, and there is, a, there is a reason for that, like, it's not by accident, it's not just that these guys are genetic freaks, and they just do whatever the hell they want, and they grow, and somebody like Raphael isn't a genetic freak, and he can't grow, no, 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 it's really about Matt's approach, he really works in the off-season, he's a great off-season coach, but also he's a great prep coach, too, you can see how well he's doing with picking his guys like uh, Sean Clarita, like Nick Walker, like I would say Brad Wilkin as well. Uh, you're going to see what he's going to do with uh, Ian Valier now that they're working together. But yeah, that will be a good choice for Rafael. However, he's not working with Chris Asito anymore. And we'll see what's going to come out from this, like who's going to be his next coach and what is going to be his result next time he steps on stage. Is he actually going to make some serious progress in size which is definitely something he needs to do if he wants to be more competitive and like climb that ladder going from top 10 to like top 5. That's what he needs, more muscle, for sure. But hey, Chris Asito found him a replacement already. <laughs> he posted a couple of guys that he's working with now and there are a lot of big name guys and the biggest name here is Goodwito. As you can see, yeah, Chris Asito is working with Goodwito and Kud Vito is looking absolutely ridiculous right now. So he posted these two photos. Uh, front lat spread and back lat spread. And man, this guy is a freaking mass monster. Like, look at those freaking legs from behind, from the front. Uh, you can see the, the arms that are super massive. The lats that are popping. The waist that is very small. Just the overall shape and the muscularity. Like, this guy... Is going to be something. I can see this guy being a top 5 Olympian in a couple of years for sure. Now that he's working with Chris Asito, we can be sure that he's going to bring great conditioning to the stage. I'm not sure exactly which show he picked. If you guys know something, let us know down below in the comment section. But yeah, whichever show he's doing, I'm sure he's going to do very well. I'm sure he's going to... I'm sure he's able to win a pro show. I don't know if he would be able to if he was still working with his previous coach or whoever was coaching him before. And maybe he was doing it himself because he was never really super, super diced, super well picked. But now with Chris Asito, I have no doubts. This guy is going to be at his absolute best conditioning and uh, fullness wise. And with his muscularity, with this physique that he has, yeah, this is a pro show winning worthy physique, no doubt. 
All right, the next photo is a photo of Andrew Jack and Vlad Suhruchko. These two guys took a photo together and this is looking very, very interesting. So first of all, Vlad is looking better, for sure. Because he's a, he's a freak. I mean, this guy is super, super massive. And in the gym, especially, he looks incredible. On stage, he looks amazing as well. But when you look at him in the gym, you would say this guy is the Mr. Olympia. Like, he's going to beat everybody. Hadi, uh, Derek, Nick, whoever, Samson. But on stage, he's not that good. Like, he, he struggles to win a pro show. And at the Olympia, he's not a top 15 material yet. But in the gym, he looks insane. And I'm saying he's not 15 material yet. That means that I can definitely see this guy being top 15, top 10, even top 6. Even I, I don't see why he wouldn't win the Olympia. Like, I mean, it's not excluded from conversation. It's not realistic to speak about it right now because he's not that uh, high uh, on the ladder yet. But yeah, he has all the tools. Like, he's a mass monster. Uh, what was holding him back so far was... I don't know if it is Sintel or he's just pinning his delts and his lats, but there are visible uh, injection sites. You can see it in his lats and his delts especially. Maybe you can see it a little bit here in his right delt. I'm not sure if that's just shadow or something, but that was his problem. And also conditioning. If he can get a little bit more shredded and if he can fix that, you know, stop pinning his delts and lats and just go with glutes or with or i don't know just use less gear maybe he's just doing that much stuff that he doesn't have where to put it he, he has to put it everywhere and if you put enough oil in your lats and your shoulders there is a point where you can't even hide it anymore so maybe pick a bigger body part or just use less gear i don't know what the hell he's doing but that's his issue here he is killing andrew jacked really but andrew He's also looking very good, uh, don't get me wrong, but something is off with his stomach. And I'm guessing this is just what his stomach is looking like uh, in the off-season. I mean, he's not really off-season, he's going to be competing at Texas Pro, which I think is a bad decision, because as you can see right here, he made zero progress. I mean, when would he make progress? Like, uh, he just did the Arnold recently. He needs a little bit of an off-season to really make progress, and if he wants to be, and he can be, you know, like, one of the top guys at the Olympia, like, top three. I can see him up there. If he wants that, you know, he needs to fill out his physique, his frame a little bit more. Especially the arms, and I would say forearms, even though it's a small body part, but it's hurting his illusion. Uh, I would say hamstrings and just uh, add more tissue everywhere so he can afford to suffer down, to die hard, and to actually lose all the body fat and get shredded and not lose the fullness so once again, an off season is warranted for Andrew Jack, but he's not gonna do it. He's gonna focus on competing again and again. And if he does that, I don't see him getting up there like being one of the top three guys. I could be wrong. Maybe he can just recomp from show to show and just make a lot of progress uh, during those weeks after the show when your body is super uh, insulin sensitive. But I don't know. I mean, Milos Archer used to do that. He always did that. He never really had an off season. And he progressed, sure, to a point, but he was never a mass monster. The other guys that were actual mass monsters, that actually grew a ton of muscle, they had off-seasons. They had long and deep off-seasons. And Andrew, I mean, he just started competing recently. So he's very young in the sport, and he doesn't have a lot of experience, and he's not a young guy. He's 38, I believe, right now, so his days are numbered. Like, he can't really be a top guy for way too long. Maybe he has 2, 3, maybe 5 to 10 years max, but that would be just crazy. Probably it's going to be more like 5, 6, maximum 7 years. So he's probably thinking, if if I have only that much time, better I better just do all the shows that I can and get to the Olympia as many times as I can. But if I was him, I would take my year off and do the Olympia next year when he actually makes progress and can fight for that title. Now you can see this guy is doing the side poses. Andrew is doing side tricep and Vlad is doing side chest. So you can't really compare them because they're not doing the same pose. But once again, uh, Andrew's stomach is looking a little bit weird to me. Like he has a beautiful midsection on stage. Uh, right now in the offseason, it's not really the case, but I believe that's just what usually happens with his physique in the offseason. I don't think there is nothing to worry about. 
Anyways guys, that's gonna do it for this video. Tell me in the comment section, do you think Andrew should be competing? Is it smart for him to do that access and then the Olympia again? Or should he have a longer off-season? Also tell me what you think about uh, why Rafael left Chris Asito and how good is Good Vitor gonna do with Chris Asito? And also tell me about Sibam's physique. What do you think he's doing? What do you think he's taking? And is he looking good to you right now? And also, guys, don't forget to check out the Old School Labs website. There is the link down below. And if you want to support me and my channel, just buy any of the supplements and just use the code EVAN. It's a discount code. You get a 15% discount. You save some money. You help me out. If you buy some of the supplements, you can tag me on IG and let me know how you liked it. If you didn't like it, actually, you can return it and get your money back. But I promise you, you're going to like, you're going to love whatever you try because it's all super high quality. Old School Labs down below in the caption. Thank you guys for watching, all the best guys and bye bye.